All right, so we got the body off, brought the frame home. Since what, what I've done since then is I've rolled the frame out. I took my pressure washer and cleaned out all of the dirt. Um, as soon as it was done, it like flash rusted and it was like a coat of rust on the paint. And so then I took my wire wheel and I attacked it with the wire wheel for uh, some time. Uh, it took me a few um, took me a few minutes to get going. What here's what I've learned about wire wheeling frames. It's fine and coarse. When I took the coarse to it, it obliterated the factory paint, the rust, dirt, anything built up on the frame, and you can tell because it's like shiny silver and it's amazing. It has no pitting or anything. So some things to note about the coarse wire is I have these all over everywhere. I've been stepping on them in my socks. Uh, they came off in my shirts. I'm only allowed to wear like super old clothes doing all of this. That's why it looks like I'm always in pajamas. And in all of the clothes I use this with, it's their wires stuck all over. I highly recommend uh, you wear safety glasses safety note of the day. So I got pretty excited about that because the polishing is just uh, gonna be fantastic. I went to Corvette Forum and I asked them for what do people use for um, painting frames and the majority of the people, not, not a lot of people answered, but the majority of people were like hands down go do um, powder coating. So I've thought about that. The problem I have with that is I rebuilt a dirt bike a few years ago and I went and got the frame powder coated and when it came back um, there were sections that chipped easily and that's my first impression of powder coating. The dirt bike turned out really fantastic but when I got it all together I had to uh, disassemble it again. I'm afraid of that happening here so what I do know and what I am comfortable with is like a just a painting system. So I want to do a spray paint one. One guy uh, that I'm going to tr put my trust in, a person I don't know on Corvette Forum, he did Eastwood 2K primer and frame paint. So I looked at that. I'm going to try out Eastwood. This is the snowball effect of doing a, a project like this though. So I get it down and I think, oh man, my next step is going to be grab the engine, grab the transmission, throw it in measure it up and put the body back on but now <clears throat> every time i get like 20 minutes to think about my car during the day when i'm not at home i just think well what if i did this and then that adds to my plans an example of that is i think now originally i was just going to paint it put the engine on measure it up cut the cross member where i need to weld the cross member where i need to and throw the body back on that's all changed now and it will probably change again tomorrow. My plan now is to stop cleaning the frame with the wire brush, put the trans and engine together, put it in, do the measurements, and do the cutting and welding before I paint and clean. So then I'll get that all together, take it back out, and then I'll wire wheel it, and here's the snowball is, I feel now like all the bushings I can pretty easily get to, all the U-joints I can really easily get to, the differential I can really easily get to. So I'm going to take all that stuff off and probably replace it, which wasn't in my initial estimate estimated budget. Um, but man, I'll have a sweet car when it's over if I do that. I'm giving myself a deadline to be February 17th, which is Michael Jordan's birthday. So I think I can get most of that done um, within the next month time frame, get the body back on, and then spend all of January and most of February redoing the body. The body. So I want to grab my engine, throw it over here. I'm going to pull the water pump off of it. I'm going to pull the harmonic balancer off of it. I'm going to get the timing chain cover off clean that all up, pull the OptiSpark out, and look at the OptiSpark. I've never really dealt with an OptiSpark, so I'm gonna learn about that. I'll probably pause there because I'm gonna have to study to see if this OptiSpark's gonna be good. I'll have to learn how to test it off the stand and see if I need a new OptiSpark. Uh, that's today's plan. All right, so let's learn this together. Looks like I have a 
temperature gauge goes right there in the front of the engine. Remove. Maybe maybe I'll take these off first if you can see those. So I just recently got this wrench. If you don't have one of these wrenches, your life is terrible. So this is supposed to something comes off. Here's my love tap hammer. This is a rubber mallet. Alright, so that's not working. Oh, you know what? I need to mark. I probably need to mark before I get crazy. I feel like permanent marker is good. Instead of a love tap, let's give it a aggressive bathing tap. Should I soak that in PB blaster? I'll take a vote. My vote is yes. We're going to soak this in PB blaster to help encourage that to break free. All right. So far, I haven't done anything. Ooh, 14, winner. Yeah, I think I just mentioned that I just got this. I still am not sure how to use it. Oh, that's awesome. So one reason you get this all on video, because then I know where the short one goes. So there's actually five. And is there six is the bigger question. Uh-oh, love tap. Why is my love tapping? I just wanna, I need to keep it rated for YouTube so I can't do more than that. Ooh, I can feel it. I can feel it like clicking. That ignition coil is crazy, isn't it? Like why is that? Come on all the way over here. Where does it go to? Love tap try. Over here. Go right there. Why? Well, how hard can it be? It's a water pump. People have been taking these off for hundreds of years. Hundred ish? One hundred years? Maybe just one one hundred. Maybe that's not plural. Oh yeah. That side's free. No, why isn't this side free? I just pull it by the horn. What would help right now is if you could talk. To YouTube and get answers back. Because if I could get your answer, I'm like, what do I do next? Then you would just see me pounding on this for 14 minutes. Oh, that thing looks like it's pressed on. Well, if it's pressed on, how am I going to get it off? So, what would you guys do? Well, maybe I need to look at the uh, do I need to look at my other water pump? Let's look at this water pump. This water pump has one, two, oh, it has six. Well, where's that one? One, two, oh, there's six. Oh, geez. One, two, oh, I got six. One, two. Is there one back there? Oh, my, there's one way back there. How do I get that off? I thought this was going to be easy. Oh, what's the plumbing for it? I was looking for that. Oh my goodness. So that was embarrassing because, ah, very easy. Very easy to get that off after you take all six bolts out. So now do I have to, what do I got to do for this? Is PB Blaster explosive? Man, this is so fascinating. If it's not explosive, maybe I can heat that up. <sighs> Eagle Scout, 14 years old. So let's see if this is going to blow up. So it is not flammable. Things look like they're melting behind it. Uh, maybe plan B. Love tap. Aren't these supposed to just come off? 
Like this shouldn't be a thing. Look, is that moving? I do say that I should get a piece of wood. Boy Scout. Ah, yeah. Ta da! Like, now what? I'm gonna have to wire brush this and clean it. These are not to my standards. But why, why do you think there's an arrow there? Like, why do you think there's an arrow there? What does that do? I don't see a timing mechanism anywhere. Uh, whatever that is. Two, two rungadagnas that way. That's what it needs to be torqued to. So that's not coming off. I need a puller for that. Now the Opti Spark. Oh, two, eight, six, four. So two, eight, six, four. Two, eight, six, four. And these are garbage. Like, what, what are these are supposed to say? They're covered in oil. Come on, buddy. Two, three. So, remember when I was wrong about the five on the water pump. Good chance I'll be wrong on this too. That is so one. There's so much seven. So one seven three. One seven three. Five. Hopefully this is five. What if it's two threes? That'd be terrible. Also, would be really weird. You're in my world now, buddy. I need a little zzz. I got a big zzz. Now I need a little zzz. This is so exciting. I don't know what it looks like. Oh no. I have the engine turned to where I can't. I'm going to show you guys what not to do with your tools. Turn clockwise. Ah, don't do this with your tools. Ah. Oh, that's enough. What? What are you talking about? That's it? So I don't really know what that means. Looks like it's in good nick. What does that mean? So can I just buy this? I thought I had to buy that. Oh shoot. You know what I did do. It's how do I know that's lined up with that? Great. Now I gotta, now what? Well that was, that was bad on my part. I gotta find top bit center anyway. So I wanna see what this is though. So do I take these little torque bits off? And that's the part I look at? Do I have to have those off to put this all back together? Oh, well, it looks like I got some reading to do. That's all very exciting. So all this is uh, all new to me. Quite frankly, it all looks good. Look at this. So I got to replace this seal. I don't think you can see that. I mean, with this. Look how bad that seal is leaking. I'm just pouring out oil and spraying it all over here. Other than that, this engine just needs to be a little bit vacuumed. So I'll vacuum it up. What a fun! For all the bad rap the Appy Spark gets. It's actually a pretty cool design. So I think I put the Opti back on. And then I can power wash this area. Pretty exciting to get this far into it. Seeing what needs to be changed. And uh, next, next adventure is finding a puller for this. And getting this off. 
you to read up about OptiSparks, and I thought that was going to be different. I thought it was going to pull that out like a distributor and a shaft was going to come out. Uh, hopefully next time this I can pull this off. We'll look at the timing chain and clean it up. This is all I want to do right now. Uh, that just feels so right. Six gears feels so right.